everybody, it's Kelly at My Sofa Home. Today we're gonna to do a late fall tour of the kitchen and I'm gonna show you some discoveries. So there are two things that I really want you to take away from today's video. That holiday and seasonal decor does not have to be complicated, does not have to take an entire three day weekend to accomplish, it can just be little touches. And the other thing is use the good stuff. Use your pretty things. Even when I say good stuff, it doesn't have to be expensive stuff. It can be stuff that you've thrifted, but it's just really pretty things. You know, serve on silver trays and pretty platters and things like that. That is really going to make a difference in your decor. So seasonal decor can be simple. You don't need bins and bins, okay? It can be simply a bunch of feathers that you find someplace that sort of evokes some fall. It can be a few pumpkins put around in a tasteful place. It can be some fresh garland at Christmas time and maybe a bow, or maybe not even a bow. Just little touches put in the right spot go a really long way to transitioning your home for the seasons, for celebrating the seasons, and just making your house beautiful throughout the year. So today we're going to show you some uh, ways that I accomplish that in my kitchen. If you, when you look around and you see the whole tour, you'll realize that there's not a whole lot of seasonal decor in here. I have a couple of pumpkins and uh, these feathers. These could go all, you know, sort of all year round if you wanted to. And uh, fresh flowers. That is really all I used for seasonal decor you know, up until Christmas. And then, of course, there's the Christmas tree. And we'll get to that soon. But today we're going to look at the late fall. And I want to just you to take into consideration uh, the small amount of seasonal decor that I have, but taken together, it has a pretty big impact in my kitchen. Here's a great spot to talk about just popping in a little seasonal decor. When you look at this whole arrangement here, really the only thing that is truly seasonal is the little white pumpkin. I have some French books in a gray tone. Uh, this is a feather duster that I just love. It's sort of iridescent. And then one of my favorite things to put around in various vignettes and whatnot, twine, string, so pretty, so neutral, so textured. It really adds a lot here. And then branches. Branches can go through all the seasons and they fill up space so well and they're so inexpensive. I mean, obviously you can cut some from your yard if you had them. And even in the springtime, I've done this. I have added tiny little flowers, little silk flowers, and glued them on. I have a blog post about that. And that transitions these from looking like fall branches into you know budding spring branches. So if you take this whole area here, the vignette and the branches, really there's one thing that screams fall, and that's that pumpkin. If I took that out and I put in some sort of Christmas ball, maybe a shiny bright or something like that, or I put shiny brights in here and replacing the twine, took away the pumpkin, I could transition easily for Christmas. And it would take me, you know, maybe three minutes. So I'm holding on over here because this latest discovery makes me absolutely weak in the knees. So I found this trophy at an estate sale recently and I saw it from across the room and I started running towards it. And I was imagining somebody else grabbing it by the handle before I got there. I think I might have dove on it and I sort of done a roll onto the carpet, but um, it's no worse for wear. So here it is, it's from 1931, it's from the St. Louis Horse Show. And there were horses in my previous life. As a teenage girl, I did ride horses, but I'm not, you know, I definitely would not have won a trophy like this. So, but I'm so excited to have it. I just absolutely love it. And I love the history of it. And I love thinking about the people who won it and how they must have felt on the day that they received it and all that good stuff. So here it is in, a, in my prize spot in my kitchen. Uh, this is where I always like to have some sort of floral arrangement. I always have some sort of container here, even if it's not filled. And I'm usually working in our magic number threes here. So we have the trophy, we have a smaller silver piece, and then the set of antlers. Now here's the antlers. They're working for late fall and they can slide right into the holiday season as well. And let me give you a little tip about using some sort of special container like this, a vintage one or something you're just concerned about some damage. Put in a plastic or glass container inside of it, and that's where you're going to put your water and your floral preservative, and that's where you'll actually make sure that you get the stems of the flowers. Make sure you're getting them actually into the water. Uh, you know, feel around in there. It is um, I wouldn't want to damage this. Also, I don't want to end up with some sort of slow leak. That happened to me once on the dining room table. Uh, a vintage piece 
pretty flower arrangement. I woke up in the morning and all the water had seeped out onto the table and the runner. And that's a big bummer. So we don't want that to happen. But um, yeah, so this is one of my new discoveries, but it's not the discovery I re discoveries I really want to tell you about. We'll do that at the end of the video. So here we are in the cozy chair in the kitchen. You guys know I love that this is here and so happy that we added it and just took out a really busy big vignette that wasn't really doing anything for anyone. But I can still decorate it for the seasons and the holidays, right? So in the summer we had the uh, buffalo check and now I have this great grain sack envelope pillows. We actually sell these in bespoke decor and I'm loving this gray one, the envelope in the back, so cozy. And then, oh, the beloved Mongolian pillows. I have those. And then I put a throw, and then I have a fauta, which I really love. And this is such a great little spot. So I actually got this basket. It's one of those longer burger. Am I saying that right? Baskets, you know, they're, they're pretty expensive baskets. And this is a little cooler. I found that in a state sale, and I spray painted it black, you know, <laughs> because I do that. And here, this is where I have my tea in the morning. So if you have emailed me the night before and I'm getting back to you early in the morning, this is pretty much where I'm doing it from. Uh, such a great little spot. And yes, it still allows me to add some seasonal and other types of decor. And then I have the hutch here, which I really don't change up very often at all. I have a lot of my white uh, pieces in there, whether it be pictures or stacks of plates. But I did this year to switch it out. Uh, for the fall, I took the moss balls from the top and I replaced them with uh, princess, uh, excuse me, Cinderella uh, size pumpkins spray painted white. So those aren't real pumpkins. Those are faux that I spray painted white. And I put them in the um, top of the um, champagne buckets, which I thought was kind of fun. And the rest of it sort of just stays the same. Sometimes I change it out, maybe put um, some apples or baby pumpkins up there, but I didn't even bother to do that this year because I thought there was really enough going on in the kitchen for the fall. So in here is where I found the discoveries that I've been talking about. So not in here, in here. Whoa. It's kind of spooky and fallish, isn't it? This goes to our basement, which is still kind of really scary and not completely organized, so I'm not showing it to you. But there's a middle st spiral staircase that goes down to a stone basement down here. And in the walls in here is where we found these things I'm gonna share with you. Okay, so now I'm gonna tell you about the discoveries. <laughs> okay, so in that wall cabinet, that secret door that leads to our basement, we had to do some electrical work. And while we were digging into the wall, looking for some wires and whatnot, came upon that sound. And then we pulled out one of these bottles. Isn't it cool? So I've hardly cleaned it up at all. I just kind of rinsed it off. I guess I kind of just wanted to just have the dust of ages on it. It's still got the cork in it. And then this other one was with it. And this was obviously a medicine bottle. It says um, owl drugs and it has the owl with the RX on it. And then this, I think, was an inkwell, don't you think? You just stick your pen in there with the ink. And then this is the top of a mason jar. We love our mason jars. And this is from the Consolidated Fruit Jar Company of New York. I'm from New York, so I think that's really fun. How did that end up in my wool? And then this um, rusty spoon. We won't be buttering any toast with that anytime soon, but kind of cool. Just wondering like, why these particular items were together in the wall. They weren't inside anything, but they were all next to each other. And then this, the piece de resistance from inside is this, uh, it looks like a, like a part of an antler. Something is from the Royal Order of Elks or something. And I, we looked it up. My mom actually helped me look it up. And uh, it's from the Ryan Gold Beer Company. And they were giving these little like little swags out to dudes that belong to the Elks Club back in 1912. And so that was in my wall. Isn't that fun? So anyway, I'm trying to think of a way to display all these things together so they can remain together as they have been for a long time inside the wall. So if you guys have any good ideas about that, definitely leave me a comment because um, I'm really a little perplexed on how I'm going to use these. 
And another discovery I want to tell you about is a person. So recently I discovered another YouTuber. Her name is Rachel and she's at the Frugal Farmhouse and it's coming up for a visit. And Rachel is amazing. I love her channel. She's so much fun. She's been on YouTube for a while. So she's got this whole YouTube thing down and she takes you um, through some thrifting hauls that she does and how she uses the pieces in her house. So I highly recommend that you head over to Rachel's channel, The Frugal Farmhouse, and have a look at her videos and subscribe there. I know some of you already do, so it's kind of fun that we can cross-pollinate that way here on YouTube and all get to know each other. So thanks for coming by today. I'm so excited to show you my discoveries and share Rachel from The Frugal Farmhouse with you. If you're enjoying the videos that we have here, please subscribe to My Soulful Home so you can uh, you know, stay up to date with all the new ones coming at you. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. Bye.